Welcome to EXP. Today we wish to uh, look at uh, basic variance analysis. What we will discuss is the variances which relate to sales, and then we'll look at material variances, labor variances, variable overhead variances, and fixed overhead variances. These are the typical variances that we need to understand for basic variance analysis. In order to do variance analysis, we need to have an idea of what standard costs are, and we'll see them in specific examples. The variance is therefore capturing the or quantifying the difference between our actual results and what we would budget according to standards. We can have favorable variances indicated by the letter F or adverse variances indicated by the letter A. Let's start with sales variances. And the best way to get into the subject here is to uh, look at examples of the two sub variances that make up our sales variance. And that is the sales price variance and the sales volume variance. Let's take a specific example, and then one can revise by going back to the definitions and confirming how each of the variances are defined and structured. Let's look at Walter Dean in example one. Has budgeted 400 units to be sold at $25 each. And the variable costs are expected to be $18 per unit, and there are no fixed costs. The actual sales were 500 units at $20 each, and costs were as expected. We are asked to calculate the selling price variance and the sales volume contribution variance. Let's start with the selling price variance. The selling price variance, of course, is going to focus on the difference between the $25 which we budgeted to be sold at and the $20 which were the, was the actual sales price achieved. This becomes the, the difference that we need to capture. This is the essence of the selling price variance. The variance is going to be calculated based on actual number of units sold. So we can see that the budgeted sales volume is no longer relevant to us because we are focusing on the price variance and not the volume variance. Our selling price variance, therefore, will be constructed like this. Ask yourself the following questions. We could say that if the actual number of units sold, 500 units, should sell for $25 a piece based on our standard price, but the 500 units did sell for $20. So we can see here that the difference of $5 per item times 500 units gives us a $2,500 variance, and it's adverse because we sold at a lower price than we had budgeted. So that is denoted by A. This is our selling price variance. If we come back now, to our example, and we are asked to calculate the sales volume contribution variance, what they're asking us to do is to quantify the difference in the budgeted and the actual sales volume, because the focus is now on the volume. We have budgeted 400 units to be sold, and we actually sold 500 units. And therefore, that difference of 100 units needs to be quantified at the standard contribution per unit. 
The standard contribution per unit is the difference between the $25 selling price and the variable cost of $18. You can see here that we're talking about marginal costing because contribution is specific to marginal costing. If we multiply this 100 units difference by $7, we will have a $700 sales volume contribution variance, and this variance will be favorable. Can you see why? Because the good news is that we sold more units than we had budgeted. Please do example two to practice this at home. Let's move on to direct material cost variances. Now materials cost variances are best shown by example three. In example three, we're going to calculate two sub variances relating to direct materials costs. The one variance that we're going to look at is the materials price variance. We can look at the materials price variance as basically being a judgment as to whether we paid too much or too little for the materials based on standard prices. In the story here, or the scenario, materials purchased and used were 2,200 kilograms. Now we can say for the materials price variance that 2,200 kilograms should cost at the standard price of $10 per kilogram, $22,000. And we can say that the 2,200 kilograms purchased did actually cost, and we have the total here, 20,900. So the actual cost was less than the, than the expected cost of 2,200 kilograms. And that difference of $1,100 is a favorable variance. So our materials price variance is plus or favorable $1,100. If we look at the direct materials usage variance, here we're judging whether or not we used more materials or not for the production that was achieved. We produced 1,000 units. 1,000 units produced should consume how many materials? Well, we can see here from the cost card the 2 kilograms of materials necessary for, per unit. So we would have expected to produce 1,000 units utilizing 2,000 kilograms. The materials purchased and used, in fact, to produce our 1,000 units, they did consume 2,200 kilograms. There's a 200 kilogram difference here, which is adverse. And since we have to convert the units from kilograms into dollars, we use the standard price of $10 per kilogram to arrive at a final materials usage variance of $2,000, and of course it is adverse. Apply the same reasoning for labor costs, and you can see by, by structuring our questions for the direct labor rate variance, did we pay more or less than expected for labor? We should say that uh, for the hours that were paid, we should have paid X amount, which is based on the standard cost card, versus we did pay Y amount, which is given to us in the scenario. And there we can work out the direct labor rate variance. In example five, for example, we can see 
that the hours paid and worked for 3,400 hours should cost at $8 per hour $27,200. But the labor cost was, in fact, and we can say it did cost, 28300 So the difference here of $1,100 is adverse. That is our labor rate variance. Now, there's one other subvariance we need to take be aware of, in addition to the labor rate variance, and that is the labor efficiency variance. How fast or how well or productively did our chaps work? Well, the, let's just make that calculation here. The labor efficiency variance is based on the output, the actual output. 1,100 units of actual output should use how many hours of labor? Here we have in the budget, these are standards, three labor hours per unit. So at three labor hours per unit, we would expect to consume 3,300 hours. Our chaps, however, they worked and were paid for 3,400 hours. So we could say that the 1,100 units did use 3,400 hours, which means that in hours, we have 100 hours adverse variance. This is in hours. And of course, we can convert this into a monetary amount by multiplying by the labor rate per hour, the standard rate of $8 per hour, so that our labor efficiency variance is now equal to $800 adverse. And so it goes. Pay close attention to the idle time and idle time variances. And keep in mind the idle time variance is always adverse because it represents hours that were paid for but were not worked, which is a bad thing from the company's point of view. The variable overhead variances typically use labor hours in calculating the variable overheads. And therefore, as you go through the variable overhead variance, follow the same logic as was used in the labor variances. And you will see as an, an, as an analogy, the variable overhead variances can be uh, easily determined based on the parallel construction of asking yourself that the variable overheads should cost so much and they did cost so much. Always think in terms of should and did. When you get good at the variances, of course, then you can, uh, you can summarize them and compress them into shorter rules that can be applied for calculating the variances. But at this point of the learning process, it's a good idea to map it out in terms of words and look at the situation in common sense terms that you always understand what the variance outcomes are going to be. Now the fixed production overhead cost variances, the fixed overheads, is sort of a special area and we just want to briefly look at. Now we're going to work very closely uh, with the definition here. The, diff the fixed production overhead expenditure variance is, is defines the difference between our budgeted fixed production overheads and our actual fixed production overheads. You can see here is a budget and there's an actual. We also have a second variance connected to fixed overheads, and that is the volume variance. And the volume variance, unlike the expenditure variance, is looking at uh, the difference between the budgeted output in units and the actual output in units. And of course, since we have to convert units into a monetary term, into 
dollars and cents, we need to multiply the number of units by the fixed overhead cost per unit, which is the fixed overhead absorption rate. Let's look at a practical example here to see how that works. In example 9, we're given a bunch of data, and we have to calculate the fixed production overhead expenditure variance, that's 1, and 2, the volume variances, and that's precisely what we're going to calculate now. So let's uh, start with the fixed production overhead expenditure variance. The budgeted fixed production overheads we can see here are $4,375. And we can see that the actual fixed production overhead expenditure is $4,800. Let's extract those two numbers and let's take the difference. And we can see that the budgeted fixed production overheads were exceeded by the actual fixed production overheads. And that, of course, is not good. And therefore, the difference here of $425 is going to be an adverse fixed production overhead expenditure variance. This is the number one, it's the expenditure variance. Let's look at the second variance, the volume variance. Now the volume variance is interesting because it's looking at the actual output which was produced and the actual output produced in March was 1,800 units. Against the budgeted output, we budgeted to produce 1,750 units. That's actually good news because we produced more than we had budgeted. And the difference here is equal to 250 no, excuse me, 50 units difference. And we're going to turn this 50 units into a monetary amount by multiplying by the standard fixed production overhead cost of $2.50 per unit, which will give us a, a volume variance, a fixed overhead volume variance of one hundred and twenty five dollars and as we said before because we produced more than we had budgeted this is a favorable variance and so those are the key basic variances in a very based on very simple numbers make sure that you have your definition straight in terms of comparing the correct things with each other and calculating variances accurately should not be a problem at all Thank you.